I will be following Hermer's uh, exa- Herman's example. I, I do have example. one question for you, James, before you sure. go, if that's okay. Yeah. We're, we're, okay, so we know Infinite Money Glitch is about like the ultimate heist. Um, yep. This new one is this horror sci-fi can't escape your work. Where do you come up with the ideas and inspirations for those? Like they are complete opposite genre, like areas. Uh, if you read broadly, you will have a broad variety of ideas. Mm -hmm. um like uh five to four like i mentioned uh it takes inspiration from the back rooms from the night from the movie cube uh takes some inspiration from uh the survival game genre although i didn't i didn't get as much use out of survival games as i would have liked i'm probably going to do a uh a another story in this idea uh, and redo it with a more game-like setup, uh, just because that'd be fun. I, I want to do a werewolf uh, game. Ooh, that would be cool. Uh, but you know, it's, I, I don't really stick to one genre when I read manga or when I read books. Um, just as a as an example, I'm currently reading Gaunt's Ghost, 40k sci-fi action stuff, uh, mm-hmm. because I'm getting into 40k with my friends. Hmm. Uh, my next book that I'm reading. Uh, it's not a book. It's a play. I'm reading Faust by Goethe. You know, a 300-year-old German play uh, because oh, it's very well-renowned uh, as part of the canon. And after that, I'm going into nonfiction, uh, this book, Wonder Wolf, Wonderworks, which is a uh, breakdown on uh, the various innovations and technological uh, progressions of the written form, allegedly. Uh, and I don't know what this will teach me. Maybe nothing. Maybe it'll give me a good idea. Um, but like Infinite Money Glitch, that's because I watch the news. It's ba- it's based on the GameStop short squeeze. Uh, and the fact that I'm still angry that I guessed the sale point wrong by $5. I was 1% <laughs> off and lost all my money. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, yeah, I, I got one last question before you bail. When this whole thing is said and done with Disney, have you been taking notes to write the Disney scandal? <laughs> um, I don't think there's a good narrative to Disney. I was just giving you a hard yeah. time. It, well, if, like, if you combine it with a theme park mystery. That's <laughs> actually very overdone because there used to be a lot of theme parks uh, before Disney World became the only one. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's a, that's actually a well explored genre of a failing theme park with a uh, you know a bad past of mismanagement and passion gone wrong. There's like two abandoned ones right here in the northwest. So yeah, I went down a YouTube rabbit hole for like a week exploring all these. Yep, closed there, there parks are some spooky urban why. explorer stuff. Yeah, there's a good stuff out there. I think the best abandoned theme park. Uh, show I've ever seen was when Cartman bought the theme park in South Park. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I kind of just take I, I actually take like the South Park strategy. You combine three different ideas and then just hammer them together until they're one story, and you'll have something quite unique. Uh, Ship of Fools, my second book. That was, it's, I stole Master Chief from Halo and gave him a philosophical problem of mut- uh, mixed with mutiny and Lord of the Flies. Uh, oh, nice. I couldn't, I almost can't tell you what the plot structure is or how, uh, I didn't know what, uh, whether to label that military sci fi, horror, political drama, or what, because it was yes. kind of all of them. Um, mm-hmm. But if you mix ideas, you'll end up with something unique. But you may not realize what you're mixing until you're done. So I didn't mean to have my mic drop moment over top. You're talking. Uh, like for example, Shadow of the Conqueror is Sky Pirates meets Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> it really is too. Usually what I do is I just take off very, I take very niche stories from the Bible and like 100% copy that. 
Uh, Redout yeah, Productions, well. it should give you Backrooms vibes. That was one of the inspirations. It's just that uh, they're in an they're in their own office and they can't find the door out because all the rooms are scrambled. That sounds terribly terrible. That's that's where especially they, when you're just from. about to off work. Yep, yes, uh, the clocks all stop yeah. at five minutes to four, and four is when they were supposed to go home. Oh, uh, that's terrible. And then I'm you get Dante from Clerks popping up in the middle of it, going, "I wasn't even supposed to be here today." <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that four is the Japanese number of death. Oh, I didn't realize that. Hmm. I'm going to yeah. guess you did, James. It was pointed out to me when I was debating between uh, this and the su the subtitle suspension space. Uh -huh. If you watch a lot of Japanese horror um, shows, animes, movies, things will report uh, repeat itself four times. That's like our number 13 to them. Mm -hmm. So even oh, some people who are really superstitious will even skip leveling number four in like an elevator and stuff. <laughs> Does anybody know the significance to the number 13? Our culture? Mm. I'm not sure. Um, I think How many full moons in the year? Hmm. Is that where it came from? I believe so. Well, I, I do believe it has something to do with some of the power numbers, but that... What specifically, I don't know, because I, I'm aware of the power numbers. I don't know what they are. Well, in Japan, they associate four with death is because of how they pronounce it. Uh, some of the pronunciation will actually literally translate to death, depending on the region. Huh. Huh. All right, well, on a completely different genre, I got to go write epic fantasy in a desert. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Right. Sorry, James. Thanks for James. Thanks for coming on. Thanks yeah. for having me on. Yep. Have a good night. Uh, the link is in both the chat and the description.